Welcome to Hard Reboot, where we explore technology and its impact on business and society. The Martian fantasy. So, let me get this straight. We've got a planet. Earth, I think it's called. With things like oxygen, food, water, internet and Netflix. But it seems there's a certain group of billionaires. You know the type, richer than a royal flush at a high-stakes poker game. Who've decided, no, this isn't for us. We'd rather go to a barren, desolate rock where the air is literally poisonous. They're talking about Mars, of course. Yes, Mars. Where the weather forecast is permanently set at, uninhabitable. Now, I'm all for a good adventure, but Mars? Really? I mean, the place is just one giant inhospitable desert. It makes the Sahara look like a holiday resort. Even the camels would be packing their bags to get out of there. But apparently, it's the next frontier. A bit like saying your next vacation will be at the center of a volcano, really. And you know what's funny? We're not even good at living on Earth yet. We've got poverty, hunger, climate change, wars, and a whole other Pandora's box of issues. But sure, let's solve our problems by going to a place with no breathable air, crushing radiation, and soil that's about as fertile as a brick. Sounds like a jolly good plan. The technocratic dream. So, who are these cosmic pioneers? Well, they're the same blokes who brought us electric cars, online shopping, and rocket-shaped, well, rockets. People like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. You'd think they'd have enough on their plates with running companies, making money and occasionally paying taxes. But no, they've got starry-eyed dreams of colonizing Mars. Musk wants to make life multiplanetary, which sounds like a fancy way of saying he's bored with just one planet. But, who could blame him? when you've got more money than some countries. Earthly pleasures might start to pale. And Bezos, he wants to build floating space habitats. It's like they're playing a game of who can come up with the most outlandish sci-fi scenario. And you know, we used to dream about flying cars and teleportation. But here we are, aspiring to live in floating tin cans and on lifeless rocks. It's like asking for a supersonic jet and getting a pair of roller skates instead. Progress, a eh? a race of resources. But hold on, there's an argument to this madness. Apparently, going to Mars could help us solve our resource problems. You see, Mars has things like water ice and minerals that we could use. It's a bit like saying, we've run out of milk. So let's go to the next galaxy to get some. Makes complete sense, doesn't it? And here's another thing. Some say that colonizing Mars could be our insurance policy against an existential catastrophe on Earth. A sort of backup drive for humanity. But let's be honest, if we somehow manage to ruin this lush, life-supporting planet, what are the odds that we'd do any better on Mars? It's like giving a naughty child a second ice cream after they've just dropped the first one. So, going to Mars to solve our problems. It's a bit like trying to fix a leaky faucet by building a new house. Sure, you won't notice the drip anymore, but you've still got a plumbing problem. Doing right by Earth. Look. I'm all for exploration. I'm all for pushing boundaries. But it strikes me as just a tad strange that we're willing to spend trillions of dollars on getting to a place that's about as welcoming as a rabid badger, when we could use those resources to fix our own planet. I mean, imagine if we put as much effort into combating climate change, poverty, or inequality as we do into figuring out how to grow potatoes on Mars. We might actually get somewhere. Now. I'm not saying we shouldn't dream big or aim high, but perhaps we could dream a little more about Earth 2.0 and a little less about Mars 1.0. Let's face it, the view's better here, the weather's more agreeable, and there's a much wider selection of takeout options. And to those who say we need to colonize Mars to preserve the human race, well, I'd say, we've got a pretty good gig going here on Earth. Maybe, just maybe, we should focus on not mucking it up. You know, just in case the whole Mars thing doesn't pan out. The cosmic conundrum. So, does it make sense to go to Mars? Well, I suppose that depends on whether you fancy spending the rest of your life in a spacesuit, eating rehydrated meals, and never feeling the sun on your face again. But hey, who am I to stand in the way of progress? In the end, it's a bit like deciding to live on a desolate island, because you are tired of living in a bustling city. Yes, it might be quieter and you'll certainly have more space. But you might also find yourself missing the comforts of home. Like breathable air, and gravity. So, 
while the billionaires are racing to see who can get to Mars first. Maybe we should take a step back and ask ourselves, isn't it better to fix our home, rather than escape to an inhospitable one? After all, one man's Martian dream might just be another man's cosmic catastrophe. So what do you think? Don't forget to comment below, and be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.